name is Dr. Lawrence Singer. I'm uh, attending here at George Washington University. I graduated um, from Vanderbilt undergraduate. I did my uh, DMD, which is similar to DDS, at uh, the um, University of Pennsylvania. Now my goal for today is to hopefully educate you, uh, answer questions that you have or give you some ideas about dental implants, what's true, what's not true. Hopefully by going through my lecture, I will uh, get some things cleared up for you. Dental implants. Um, tooth loss prevalence is, is uh, pretty high in the United States. Most people over the age of 40, uh, majority have lost at least one tooth. And by the age of 60, a third of the U.S. population is a dentalist, meaning has no teeth. So uh, to give a brief history, dental implants were really invented. Uh, the ones that we use today and we think of today were invented in Sweden in the 70s, or even the late 60s, by a physician named Brandemark. And Brandemark was a, a very... Um, he was the pioneer, and over the years, and he, he originally developed implants for people who were totally missing their teeth and couldn't you know, retain and use their dentures to be able to get function back. And um, certainly implants have come a long way. I've noticed you know, in the last 15 years where people were afraid of them and uh, that now in general in, in, our popula in the population, people know that they're a superior treatment to say perhaps dentures or bridges. Um, so consequences, consequences of not having teeth is, you know, loss of function. Uh, it, when you lose multiple teeth, you also have problems with uh, speech, proper speech, proper articulation. Uh, also when teeth are missing for a long time, they, uh, we'll, see, we'll see later on that you lose the bone because the bone stays there and it stays up around the teeth as long as there's a tooth and or, or an implant in the socket. If you lose the implant, then, or the, um, excuse me, the tooth, and you don't replace it with an implant or you don't graft it with bone, it sort of resorbs or melts away. And that leads to, well, you know, changes in the facial features and, and snoring and, and all sorts of breathing problems. Um, obviously, if you don't have teeth and you can't smile and you can't eat comfortably or confidently, lack of self-confidence, and, you know, gum disease, tooth decay, periodontal disease, it has a very high correlation with uh, heart disease, diabetes, low birth weight, premature births. Um, there's all sorts of links that are starting to be um, developed with uh, poor oral health, and uh, so really it's very important to have oral health and, and proper chewing uh, and function and masticatory organ. And this here shows a woman you know, who's had all her teeth, but what happens when you lose your teeth, the, uh, the jaw resorbs on the bottom and the top, and the two jaws come closer together. And you know, we have an aesthetic and a functional uh, problem at the same time. Um, talking about implants, uh, dental implants are made out of titanium. And it's a surgical grade, we use usually what we call grade four titanium. And other things that we have titanium implants are titanium knees and hips. These are basically what dental implants look like. Um, they're laying on their side here, and I'll show you more pictures to make it clearer. <coughs> but this is called an implant body, and this part here is what's screwed into the bone. And the, they look real big here, but they're actually very tiny. They're um, about if we look at this pencil and the silver part on this pencil, they're much smaller than this. So they're very small. They're, uh, if it means anything to anybody, the average size is four millimeters in diameter and about 11 millimeters long. So on top of the implant, which these are all implant bodies, goes what's called an abutment, and these screw onto it. So this part here, the abutment, will extend an implant through the gum, and then you put your false tooth or crown on top of that. So this is, this is the, the implant that uh, I like to use. Uh, I think that they're the best. Um, they're Swedish manufactured. I, I wish they were American, but uh, 
Uh, the Swedes developed them, and they're still kind of ahead. Um, so this is an implant, and, and it's different than a tooth because the bone grows directly into the implant surface. In a tooth, the tooth has a socket, and in a tooth socket, there's ligaments, and the ligaments radiate all the way around the surface of a tooth and insert into the bone. So there's special cells on a tooth surface called cemental cells that radiate into the bone, and it's a whole attachment apparatus. This is different. This thing is solid. It can't move. So any tooth in your mouth, you can probably touch it, and it has maybe just the tiniest or slightest bit of wiggle. It's supposed to. But an implant is anchored like a rock. It's totally um, integrated into a bone, as opposed to slightly the slight give that a normal socket will have. Again, this is just to give you a couple representations of this would be a tooth, this is a tooth, this is how an implant would work in between. This is one of the older collars. Uh, this is you know, a comparison. This is a crown on top of a tooth on the left side. On the right side, that's uh, an implant and an abutment. So uh, again, what I was saying before is it's, very, it's a very complex system of uh, connective tissue. We call it the attachment apparatus of how a tooth attaches to uh, the, t the gum attaches to the tooth and the ligaments here, and likewise how the gum attaches to the implant. Because if you don't have the gum, a good attachment of the gum, a really tight attachment of the gum to your implant, that's a vulnerability. And if you start to have an infection there, and it gets past this attachment here, you're done. It goes all the way down an infection and you end up lo losing the implant often. So you really, that's the key is preserving and, and we, use, we change our designs, we change our techniques to really make sure that uh, we have a good seal. These are just showing a few implants together. This is sort of a cross section. This is what a, a tooth here, a tooth here. This is the, the maxillary sinus or the sinus in your nose and what in, uh, implants would look like. We can have them next to each other. And this is a cutaway of the bone and how the implants look up in there. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not a simple thing just putting in implants. I've had uh, a lot of uh, people go to uh, South America for medical tourism, and um, they come back and they thought they've gotten a good deal. And I, I didn't bring the x-rays, but uh, they, people put in implants and they put stuff on top of it, but the implants are sticking halfway out of the bone. And it's about a matter of a few months to a year till these things fail. And it's even more work to regain and restore uh, the bone uh, and get implants back in. So, you know, it's not a simple, it's not a simple thing, you know, sometimes, uh, to, to, it's not a simple thing to accomplish in a uh, predictable and um, manner without proper training and proper understanding of the biological principles of how the body heals and how the tissues interact with these surfaces and what we're trying to accomplish in terms of restoring on top of them. And these are actual implants. They come in different sizes and lengths. These are what we call the abutments before. So they come in uh, colored porcelains, gold, titanium. Depends where it's going to go in the mouth. So we have all these different options. And these these things, they, they're, well, it looks complicated and and, and uh, well, whatever. Uh, if you don't make the proper choice and understand the body and its biology and have the proper shape with the right contour, when you're putting one of these on top of an implant, you're going to end up maybe compromising or losing that implant. So, again, it really, I'm not going to, I can't get into the clinical of showing everybody why it's important to know uh, or, or, or all the consequences, but. What it is important to know is, is that this is not, uh, it's not Home Depot 101 putting one of these in. You've got to, you know, understand your biological principles or you're going to end up with uh, infection and possibly loss of the implant down the road. Now this is not mine, but this uh, case is starting to have a problem here where, uh, for whatever reason, starting to lose the bone. And that's where I talk about the soft tissue bridge. This is an old implant, I don't know, it's maybe 20, 30 years old, and 
somebody at some point, um, there might have been some cement or something down here, but this thing starts to creep, and once it gets past a certain point, it's pretty hard. We can't salvage, it's very hard to salvage an implant that starts to have a problem. It's possible, but it, you know, what, what I could say is, is we, we, there's techniques we have, but we don't get what we call osseointegration, where the bone, you can't make the bone go back, grow back into it again. Once the surface is contaminated, we get one shot. An implant has to go into clean bone, and once it's, the area has been resorbed and gone away, then we have uh, a dirty implant surface and no treatment surface, surface treatment that we have to date <coughs> makes it so that the bone will reattach to it. We can make bone grow close to it, but it will not reattach to it. Um, you know, it's uh, an important thing. A lot of people are afraid, and uh, you, you know, and when you discuss these things, uh, the environment uh, of, of where you have your implant put in, sedation is available for these procedures with most clinicians, so you don't even remember what happened. Uh, you know, pain is a big question people ask me, and I'd say at least nine out of ten times, people tell me there's none. Hard to believe, but there's none. Yes, there's a screw going into your bone. But there's not very many nerves in your bone. And sometimes if they do have some, it's maybe a little soreness for a day, maybe two, which is controlled with Advil or Tylenol or over-the-counter medicines. But really, implants are truly, uh, you know, if you want to compare it, it's pain comes from root canals, uh, live teeth. And we're not dealing with live teeth anymore. We're dealing with a bone that has no, no nerves in it, very little. So it's really the pain's a minimum. This is, this is uh, my pet therapy dog, that's Disco. So he helps me with the consults or gets people a little bit more comfortable. And we also use sedation. And uh, um, so, you know, there's a lot of things we do to help people feel a little more comfortable today. So I talked a little bit about the history. Uh, Brandon Mark started this with polished collars and we've evolved towards an internal connection and uh, these very sophisticated surfaces, also principles of how to bioengineer bone and where we don't have it. If somebody's been missing teeth for a long time, we have uh, techniques now to regenerate bone and just about anywhere we need to or regenerate a ridge. It uh, can be an additional procedure, but uh, people often say, well, I was told I can't have implants. Well, that's, that's, that's almost impossible. Everybody's, everybody can have, excuse me, Everybody can have implants now um, because we do have these bone regeneration techniques. Traditionally, we used to put the implant in, come back and put an implant in, let it heal for six months, come back and put a, what we call a, a healing screw on top of it, let that heal for a few months, and then start putting a crown on top of it. Um, now we can do it all in one. We found that the success rate and the procedure, so we take the tooth out, uh, you know, provided there's no huge defect or infection, you can take the tooth out and put a crown, a temporary crown, because the permanent crown you wait till tissues, the gum tissues mature. But usually we put, uh, uh, it's best idea to put something temporary and then replace the temporary later with a uh, permanent crown after a few months after the tissues have totally matured. So you don't go around with uh, something that comes in and out don't go around without any teeth, and the process is over in just uh, a few months a lot of times. But it does depend on you know the presenting complications. If some people have been missing teeth or, or bone for a long time and, and there's bone grafting or involved, then, then that can significantly lengthen the treatment time because you have to uh, bone graft. What the idea of a bone graft is is it becomes uh, replaced with your own bone, and we're tricking a bone graft is tricking your body into uh, building bone where it isn't. So this is, um, a lot of people are, are these are a very typical situation, which I am not, I can do, I've done, but I don't, I prefer to do something different. This is when you go to some of these uh, advertisements you've seen for, uh, all on four and, and teeth on a, and teeth in a teeth in a day.